Look at that, with just one source image, I'm able to create an entire comic book page with a consistent character and the exact text I want in each of the pages spelled absolutely correctly. Look at the reflection of the photographer right there. Look at the Bay Bridge on the side and look at the text on this with the handwriting. Everything spelled correctly. This is absolutely insane. OpenAI just announced their brand new image model, GPT-40 Image Gen, and it is an absolute game changer for a lot of text to image workflow. This is hands down one of the best image model that exists out there. And for the very first time, the model is not as censored as you would have most of OpenAI tools. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the top things it can do and how you can leverage it in several workflows. So to access the model, you want to head over to chatgpt.com. If you're a plus or pro user, you have access to this. They did say it's coming to the free users. So depending on when you're watching this video, you might also have access to it. You can also access the model from Sora.com. All right, let's start with an example that has been going viral lately, which is people converting their images into some kind of cartoon looking image. And that's quite simple to do. So I'm going to drag this image here of this couple, dump it right here into ChatGPT and simply just tell it, make this a cartoon. The model runs quite slow right now. Uh, it was going to take a couple of seconds, but after that, here we go. A nice cartoonized version of that photo looks pretty good. And it works even if you have a lot of characters in the image. Here's another one here of a couple getting married with their family. And as you can see, it did the cartoon version of the entire group in the picture. I have one here. This is my favorite. I did one here with my family and very spot on with the source image, uh, including the text actually uh, that my daughters had on their shirt. And you can do different styles. So here's one I did here of my image in a 3D pixel style. And you can try different kinds of style, even asking it to maybe make you look like a firefighter, a superhero and things like that. Let's look at generating some realistic looking image and how well it adheres to the prompt. So the prompt here is create an image of a young male and an African-American female, both wearing hoodies, a blue hoodie and a black hoodie with a logo that says Crown YouTube behind a New York City backdrop and with the male raising up his hands and the lady folding her hands. And let's see how well it adhered to that prompt. So if you look at that, that is quite good. The image quality itself, it's great. It's decent. I mean, there are many models that do this, Mid Journey and the rest. But if you look at how well it adhered to the prompt, the male is raising up his hands. The female is folding her hands. Like I said, you can see the logo right there, the crown YouTube and the backdrop of Times Square, like I mentioned in the prompt. It's quite great at adhering to prompt. And the great thing is that you can actually go back and ask follow up edit to the image. So for example, I can modify the prompt to say, add sunglasses to the female and add headphones to the male. And as you can see, the characters still stay consistent. The general uh, setting of the image still stay consistent, but we now have headphones added to the male and we now have the female wearing glasses. And one of the amazing thing about this model is for the first time, we have an open AI model that is not censored. Now the model will still somewhat refuse to generate some certain kinds of uh, uh, prompt, but for the most of it, the model is quite, quite, quite uncensored. So for example, something simple as asking for an image of Albert Einstein, if you did that on DALI, you'd get this message here where it says it cannot generate an image of a realistic looking person. But you put that right here in the new image gen model. Here's Albert Einstein in the gym, looking all beefed up. No problem there for the model. Here's another one I did of Cristiano Ronaldo. And I've seen people doing images of political figures, uh, famous celebrities, even generating some minimally not very safe for work photos. I have seen people putting that out there online. I'm not gonna show any of that on this channel, but you can go out and check out those for yourself. But the model is quite, quite uncensored, which is an interesting shift for OpenAI. All right, let's talk about another feature that it has, whereby you can upload several images and sort of mix and match them up together. All right, let's look at an example of how you can use this. So I have a photo here of Messi and one of Ronaldo, and I've given it here on ChatGPT and asked it to create a poster with the text Soccer Showdown and kind of have both their names and the date on it. And let's see what it generated. And have a look at that. It's mashed the two photos together, done a beautiful design, and even the text on the design is very accurate. I can't tell you how long it would have taken to do this on something like Photoshop. This is quite next level.
Now let's talk about text generation. This is an area where this model shines the most. And I'll say this authoritatively that there is no other model out there today that can generate text as well on an image as this model does. A white image with a photo of a glass whiteboard in a room overlooking the Bay Bridge um, with a woman writing on her shirt. You can see the logo of OpenAI. The handwriting is a little bit natural and messy with a photographer in the reflection and the text reads. We have all this text that was read on that. And look at how well it adhered to that. You can see the OpenAI logo at the back of the t-shirt. You can see the reflection right here of the male, uh, the photographer taking the picture, the Bay Bridge, we can see out the window and look at the text. Look at that. That is incredible. Look how well it reads. It is written all of this text. I have been blown away. I've tried so many, try to push it to so many limits with text and I just keep getting blown away at how well it can do text. Now, let's put all of this together. It can do consistent character pretty well. It can do text pretty well. There's some great things we can do with this. Let me show you how you can create an entire comic book series using this. So I'm going to head over here and attach this reference image of a character I've created. And then I'm going to ask you to create a single cartoon page divided into four equal sizes. On each side, we see the attached character in the image first having a dialogue with his mom at home, talking with a friend outside, playing soccer, and in a classroom for each square use a speech bubble to generate the spoken dialogue and look at that we have him right here saying hi mom and then he's out with his friend hey ben hi he's out playing soccer and you can see him right here in the classroom it adhered to that prompt keeping the character consistent i'm really blown away with that one source image so i have another example here where i've generated a second character so i now have a friend and I've asked it to do the same thing, but this time around, I've specifically told it the text I want to appear in each of those four quadrants. And as you can see right here, it has done that pretty well. And so you can create an entire comic book series, literally in a couple of minutes using this. And we can even go ahead and animate these images to create animated series. I'm gonna create an entire video dedicated to just that, how you can use this to create animations. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on that notification bell. That video should be coming out in a couple of days. Now, since it was really, really good with text, I wanted to push it to the limit to see how well can it do infographics. So I have here a document with just uh, some data on the solar system and I dumped it into ChatGPT and asked it to create an infographics visualizing all of this. And look at that. We can see all the solar planets displayed here and you can see the text. I wanted it to have the text to see how well it does with the text. Each of the text properly displayed. The good thing is that you can actually give it your brand colors when it's generating these infographics. So in this one right here, I had it and said, change the color. So we have a color palette here and asked it to change the colors to these three colors, giving it the hex. And you can see it regenerated that infographics using that color palette. So, and finally, it also has the ability to generate images with transparent background. I don't know how much I can tell you that this changes a lot in the workflow. So for example, I have this 2D character that I have generated here and ask it to generate it with a transparent background. I can now download this and take it to any other software uh, for my creative workflow, for example, PowerPoint, and place it around without having that background. You can generate assets for games. You can generate assets for your animations. There's so much you can do creatively with some of these capabilities, and I can't wait to push this model to its limit and try different workflows. Like I said, I'll be creating several videos on using this on different workflows. Again, if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. It goes a long way in helping me grow this channel. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Make sure you keep learning. Bye-bye.